Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for coming here to my presentation today. So I'd like to start off by introducing myself. Um, you see, my name is Tia Jun Chen, but you can call me Tia Jun. I'm from VMware China R&D ATC, Advanced Technology Center. Uh, in our team, uh, over the past year, I'm really uh, mostly working on that IoT, Internet of Things, and edge computing and other exploration related to the IoT. But actually, besides them, I also have some personal exploration, like Unikernel. Uh, last year, I also made several presentations about my, uh, my Unikernel exploration um, for some uh, open source summit hosted by Linux Foundation. Another thing catch my eye is that uh, real-time virtualization. I think that is a good candidate to IoT. Okay. Before, uh, before I joined VMware, I also worked with several companies. Mm. You might have some name like Wind River System, uh, where I was responsible for that Wind River Linux kernel and BSP development, and Wind River the virtualization technology, uh, like Wind River the hypervisor and our parallelized guest OS, and also worked at Intel OTC uh, Open Source Technology Center. And mostly our team um, were trying to enable that. Uh, uh, some new uh, Intel hard features to open source technology communities like QVM and Zen and QMU. Okay, so that's something about myself. Uh, today I'm going to talk about that uh, preempt RT rather better things. Mm, frankly, I think this is a small story you can imagine, but I think that should be helpful. Uh, I think uh, when you are sitting here, you should allow uh, links. You probably use Raspberry Pi built for some IoT application. I think that the preeminent RT can contribute uh, to some extent. Okay, each time I have to make this sort of statement, uh, you know, it's just, just my personal uh, development, my personal exploration. So it's not a roadmap or commitment from VMware. Um, let's to go through today's agenda. Um, there are a few items here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce my motivation, and uh, secondly, um, let's look at that Raspberry Pi hardware quickly. And thirdly, I'd like to talk about a little bit that real-time, and especially for real-time links. Fourthly, um, let's review on how and what uh, we have done in terms of that preempt Raspberry links. We also had that single evaluation. The last part is about a uh, roadmap on my side, what we're going to do uh, in the future. Okay, motivation. Um, I like me here from uh, I can make my point from here. So, in the very beginning, I mentioned I'm working on IoTs. So, IoT basically means that we connect that uh, variety of device and we exchange data. Then we have that uh, data analytics, either in our cloud or either at edge side, uh, whatever. So, this data processing can come out the real business value, um, like uh, that provide that predictive uh, that behavior then can make our life better and safe. And even it can contribute to some cutting uh, edge technology, like machine learning and the, uh, blockchain. You know, machine learning needs that huge amount of data to train. Now IoT can come out that this huge amount of data. And blockchain, blockchain can help us protect that sensitive data. In some cases, like the in vehicle, vehicle need to communicate to another vehicle. We need to this is sort of that data sharing case. We need that uh, blockchain. Okay. Um, go back to IoT. That uh, building the intelligent device and system make up IoT. That internet of things. But the vast of majority things are actually our traditional embedded system. A Raspberry Pi should be one of these typical embedded system. I guess that should be good reference for your uh, IoT um, that system design. Um, and uh, we now, uh, links uh, had become such a popular operating system to that embedded system, and now to that IoT devices. I remember there was a report uh, last year um, that said, so uh, two thirds of IoT gateways were deployed with that Linux. Uh, so you can, Linux can play very well uh, in the IoT case. So in my point that Linux-based Raspberry Pi should be the best way to get started on working on IoT development to build up your IoT knowledge and expand more that IoT user case. Uh, but IoT, you need to consider real time. Um, for example, um, talk about in our car, 
we have that uh, airbag, we have that brake system, we have that uh, um, ABS. These actions, associated actions, should be responded in real time. Otherwise, that should be the disaster. I even talk about some of that uh, gadgets, um, like some variable devices. Um, we probably use that to monitor your body feature, like heartbeat. If this device cannot connect that information precisely, I think it's pointless. Okay, so I think a new device, uh, IoT device needs to meet that real-time requirement, but Linux cannot do this. So I'd like to integrate the Prime Links to that Raspberry Pi Linux. Uh, another reason I'd like to mention uh, here separately is uh, I guess many of you guys, maybe like me, would like to use that some uh, open source hardware platform or some open source that, uh, software ecosystem uh, to build your IoT application. But oftentimes, you want to use the primary links, but they don't support the primary links. So you have to build that, do, uh, you have to do that by yourself. So it's, maybe it's not very difficult, but it's not convenient. Uh, so last year, I started thinking, mm, whether we can put some time and effort to enable that provide links to this kind of user scenario. I, I want to construct a project that EPLE enabling provide links everywhere. So provide uh, that provide, uh, Raspberry links should be one of the parts. Another part is uh, that links kit are already integrated that provide links to this links kit. A link kit is that a toolkit uh, funded by Docker Corporate. Uh, basically, it, it can help us build that minimal that uh, uh, links kernel system, when we just keep those necessary components, and each component of at each system service are containerized. Uh, you can replace uh, each that component with another component as a new requirement. I think that needs kit should be a good candidate to the IoT. So, also have some remaining project I'm working on. Uh, now uh, let's look at that uh, Raspberry Pi. So to be honest, I'm not from Raspberry Pi Foundation, but I think Raspberry Pi are very successful. Um, I guess you can see that Raspberry Pi in the school for education, and uh, even you can build some DIY device. As far as some of my friends, uh, they use that Raspberry Pi uh, to um, replace that, uh, that Wi-Fi router to build up that um, smart home like a Raspberry Pi is that IoT gateway in the home. Uh, another my friend, uh, they use that multiple that Raspberry Pi build up sort of that minimal data center. He deploy that uh, Spark and do that real time data analytics. And even in some of that commercial usage, you also can find the Raspberry Pi. I read one uh, that uh, um, article uh, that mentioned uh, um, some company now NEC. They put the Raspberry Pi in their uh, huge display for to cooperate with customer, and some of that web hosting provider they provide the Raspberry Pi service. So now, I guess one day you can see the Raspberry Pi in the real data center. So to me, I think uh, Raspberry Pi should be uh, fantastic. Uh, now let's look at that hardware. Um, if I remember that correctly, uh, the first Raspberry Pi was launched in 2012. And since that, um, several generations of Raspberry Pi has been released. So now we have that from Raspberry Pi 0, 1, and 2, and 3. So it's based on different that um, architecture. Talk about the latest Raspberry Pi 3, I think it's very powerful. It has a four core that, uh, um, Cortex A53, it's based on ARM V8. And, uh, Besides that, it has that, uh, some features. It featured with that Wi-Fi and a USB and HDMI. So uh, it has that one gigabyte memory, as they like our traditional desktop. So um, basically, I think Raspberry Pi should be small, but affordable. I mean, it's low cost. Uh, in the system, uh, you can help you uh, accelerate your IoT development. Uh, especially, we can put that in the IoT development, and I mentioned those examples. So now let's look at that uh, real time. Mm, what's real time? I think that's one good way to understand this. Just look at those existing RTOS real time operating system. Look at uh, what they are trying to provide, what their features. You probably can find some common words, that's keywords like uh, interrupt and a good context switch, or preemption, or that latency and jitter, 
I mean the variation, and also maybe they said faster. And I like the point here that um, when people talk about the real-time system, there are some common misconception. The big one is that um, they think if we're reacting in uh, milliseconds or less, that can make our system real-time. But if you uh, take time, like a uh, minutes or uh, several minutes, that cannot make a real uh, make an operating system real time. That's, that's not true. I think the real time system should that this system can reliably take that um, same amount of time, um, each time do the same thing. Uh, so uh, in terms of this point, uh, Linux uh, is just uh, close to that soft real time, uh, a soft hard uh, soft real time operating system. So it's because it's now designed as that RTOS. But we need it. So a couple years ago, we have these preempt links. Actually, it's that set of kernel patch. Basically, it can help us convert that many links to that fully preempt kernel by 100%. And it's not 100%, it's close to 100%. Um, what they did, like this red LQ, um, basically, you know, uh, they can put the interrupt handler into that kind of thread contact switch. That thread can be scheduled. And they also um, trying to get a critical section preempt. So what I would, so what they did, um, they are trying to get that main links to have that quicker reaction time and help us bring down that latency to the minimum as very possible. It's like that hard time, uh, hard real time extension to our links. Uh, so um, compare the prime links to that main links. Um, uh, what has changed? I think uh, uh, after we had that prime links, some features like that uh, HRT high resolution timer and the interrupt thread and the mutag, they actually had already been merged into that main links. But there's still a big gap between that uh, primary links and mainline links. Uh, there are two parts, actually. The first, uh, you know, primary means, uh, preempt links mean it can cause more than the risk condition. So it can cause some uh, problem uh, that you never met in the traditional uh, mainline links. You will have to fix this bug to make sure primary links are stable. It's one of part. Another part, I think, that should be a big one that conversion. So, uh, Permanent links is aimed at converting that, uh, to get that main links uh, preempt, get that critical section preempt. That means uh, you have to uh, address that uh, spin lock issue. Your spin lock cannot be sleepable. Now we need to convert that to be sleepable. So we need this conversion, conversion that uh, traditional spin lock to that sleeping lock. It's still outside that uh, main links. Also, um, let's look at that Raspberry Pi links. Um, I'm not sure if one knows that that uh, Raspberry Pi hardware platform, actually that, that organization, that Raspberry Pi Foundation, it not only provides that uh, Raspberry Pi hardware platform, it also has to develop and maintain one of Raspberry Pi links that is specific to that Raspberry Pi platform. It has such uh, its own uh, community and has a forum. That source code, I think you can get from this link. It's one of the GitHub project. So um, besides that uh, sort of a native links code, um, you can find some links distribution. Uh, links, uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation um, provides that uh, Red Bean. It's based on that the bin that uh, links distribution specific to Raspberry Pi. Besides that, you also can find some existing uh, sort of third party links distributions specific to that uh, Raspberry Pi. You can find Ubuntu and Windows IoT Core. You can find that Gen2 and uh, OpenSUSE. But anyway, so these links code, all these links code, all these links distribution, they don't provide that primary that feature. So again, if you want to use the links, you have to grab that RT patch. You have to apply that on your source code. You have to try to build that and make and fix some issue to make that work. So it's not very convenient. So before we uh, integrate the print links uh, code, uh, let's look at uh, what's current status. So basically, uh, now there are two that get repo 
uh, to that uh, internal that promote links. Um, they hosting that uh, they host a different uh, that um, means kernel code uh, with additional that uh, from RT patch. The first the Git repo uh, that hosts the current of uh, RT uh, links development. Um, if that uh, one uh, the current development of one particular RT version, um, maybe uh, one day be stopped when that um, they want to switch the next version. So that's the development version would move down to the second Git repo. We call that a stable RT version. That will be continued. Uh, there, there will be continue be uh, being maintained as that stable RT version. Um, if you don't want to use that RT repo, you can use the RT patch directly. So here you can grab that RT patch. Um, you can use that um, select the appropriate against uh, you that uh, links the source code. Okay, so now let's look at a uh, way how to uh, integrate that into the uh, in links, uh, into uh, the Raspberry links. So uh, what I try to do is I have some discussion with that one of the uh, permanent links, uh, uh, with one of that uh, permanent uh, Raspberry Pi links maintainer, Philly, we had some discussion because I have made sure we are the same page table, uh, make sure uh, this can be pushed into that official branch. So. Uh, now we have some step to make this happen. Uh, the first stage is ready. It's just simple, like um, when you want to contribute one of that uh, GitHub project, uh, just uh, fork that and clone that locally and add that remote because it can help us uh, that um, get the latest uh, commits super safe to that red very pie. The stage one, stage one uh, that uh, develop cycle, um, as I discussed with that Philly. So at that one time, I check out that stand branch um, is the base of the RT branch. And then at that moment, I grab that latest RT version patch, I plan that on this stand branch. But um, if during this that develop window, if that any new RT version patch was, uh, is available, we have to replace the original one. We use that new RT version patch. Now this uh, happen, this uh, happened until the stage two, um, during that maintain stage. So that means stand branch is uh, released, is frozen. So stand branch, um, we don't replace again. So we have to follow this uh, uh, same policy in terms of that RT branch. So, the big thing is that we don't replace that original that RT version. Instead, we have to figure out that div, that delta file. We apply the delta file onto that standard RT branch. And uh, sometimes we have need to uh, merge that uh, standard branch to make sure RT branch have that new feature support or new that uh, commits to that Raspberry Pi. Another thing, if you have some bug specific to that Raspberry Pi, um, but it's related to RT issue, we just apply that on that RT um, branch. So finally, uh, I guess uh, one or two weeks ago, we pushed this branch to the official, to so official branch. I think you can get that. Uh, it's that RPI-4.14.1-RT. It's based on the latest that RT version, uh, RT19. If you like that, you can try this. So um, during this uh, development uh, cycle, we have we met some issue. Um, the first one is that um, when you check out these commits, uh, commits uh, in that uh, stand branch, you find that some commits uh, really touch that common file, like that soft IQ and HRT, like this commit. Uh, they want to convert that one uh, soft IQ commit. I don't know why they want to do it, because that short leg uh, um, said, nothing, said nothing, I don't know why. But anyway, so that means each time if you want to replace that new RT version patch, you have to replace that again. Um, but uh, um, fortunately, it's not very difficult. So another issue, the lockup issue. Um, this is because you know, um, some of that uh, Raspberry Pi uh, source code, they doesn't exist in the main links, so RT Branch have not uh, fixed any issue to that uh, uh, that Raspberry Pi uh, links like this driver USB driver. 
uh, when that USB drive is interrupted as threaded, uh, they observed that the lockup issue. But fortunately, I think uh, some guys already fixed that, so I just uh, pick up that, and but with a little bit of change, you know, in the case of uh, primary RT, we don't uh, need that disable IQ. We can use a local IQ and uh, still restore this spare, no RT. Another issue, uh, um, I guess some guy uh, reported that um, they observed this uh, warning message that disabling IQ uh, number 59. Um, as I discussed with that uh, feeling, so basically that means so, uh, in the case of the Raspberry Pi, uh, three devices, like SPI 1 and 2 and UI 1, they share the same, the same interrupt line. So um, when this uh, interrupt handler are threaded, so they call this a problem. But uh, we are trying to address the problem, what we could do. So basically, I think that's one way we can not force that threading IQ, just like our original interrupt handler. But that could have a big impact to that real-time performance. So instead, uh, Philly uh, recommended he want to that, uh, if we want to mask one of these uh, IQ, we just mask all the CPU. Uh, they are working on this approach. So. And now, uh, let me show that one example how to um, build that. Um, in my case, uh, I'd like to use cross-compiling, but yes, you definitely can build your Raspberry Pi in your Raspberry Pi platform. So, but if you want to use cross-compiling, you can download that from Linaro. I use that 64-bit. Um, so, uh, we, now we already enable that primary um, by def default. So um, you, if you use that default config file, you can get that enabled. Uh, you also can make RPM and then install the RPM. But actually, this depends on your different distribution. Okay, um, we have that uh, evaluation. In my evaluation environment, I use that Raspberry Pi PS3 Model B. I Please install that OpenSUSE 64-bit. OpenSUSE is that first official um, Linux distribution to support that Raspberry Pi. Um, typically, we uh, use that cyclic test. It's uh, belong, uh, it belongs to the belongs to the RT test. RT test is that test suite help us that test uh, different uh, RT kernel features. Um, especially cyclic test is help us to test uh, um, kernel latency. Um, how how is that work? Um, how does it work? Basically, that uh, cyclic test um, it starts that uh, uh, num uh, predefined number of measuring thread. Those measuring thread are woken up periodically with that uh, defined interval by an experiment timer, and so after that, that uh, difference between that pre-programmed timer and that uh, actually uh, effective timer. Uh, would be uh, calculated, and then you can find that minimum or the maximum and average that latency. But I recommend that you can use this um, batch script because uh, this still uh, based on the cyclic test, but it can generate that diagram. Uh, it is convenient to see that data. So um, I test the three different situations. Uh, the first one, I, I didn't enable anything. It's like the typical that um, key configuration in terms of that um, desktop. So you can see that the latency is about that uh, three um, point uh, three dot uh, six milliseconds. Um, when we put that latency in the uh, context in the context of the desktop, it's not a big deal, but it's not good in the case of IoT. So uh, next, I enable and prevent. Um, this can configure help us reduce that uh, kernel latency from the two perspective. Uh, first one, it uh, adds that uh, more that uh, preemption points explicitly, and also it, if your code they are not executing in that uh, critical section, um, they can get this code to be a preempt, like that low priority task. Then it comes to that. Uh, uh, when it comes to return from syscall, this low priority task would be uh, scheduled out. That a high priority task can be can run. Now you can the latency is down to that two dot six millisecond. A millisecond is uh, they reduce a little bit. The last case uh, we enable the prime RT um, is our 
um, complete the temporal kernel. Um, it, uh, it further reduces that kernel latency by replacing that uh, speed log to that uh, um, sleep log. And then we can all, but not all, and make sure a kernel can be preempted. Because some low level code, you still cannot be preempted. You can see that uh, latency is about uh, 150, 151 milliseconds. So um, based on our test result, you can see that uh, pretty much Raspberry Lynx really can work. It helps us reduce the latency from that 3.6 milliseconds to that 151 milliseconds. But um, here are some tips or some issues. So some guys reported that they observed that um, they observed that some of the accuracy thread spikes on CPU to some certain percentage. Like here, you can see that uh, some USB uh, thread spikes CPU about 25%. Um, but I think there's not a problem in the IT, uh, in the Raspberry platform because I found uh, even I don't enable that uh, primarity, you can find that there are a lot of interrupt on that is uh, triggered in the uh, Raspberry Pi. So I think uh, this uh, too much interrupt would have that um, too much thread because this thread had to be, uh, had to be handled again and again. But it, I want to say here it's, it's really another argument between that um, IO throughput and the context switch in terms of prior links. So, uh, Prime links uh, want to get that all good, uh, get that good context switch. That means interrupt handle cannot be handled immediately sometime. That could have a big impact to that our throughput. So how to balance that? Well, typically, I think we have this way. So I recommend that you can isolate one CPU, and then you can dedicate that uh, interrupt to this CPU. Uh, like here, I just pass that kind of parameter, like as CPU, equivalent to the three. That means the physical CPU of three is isolated from that link's scheduled domain. And then I dedicate IQ to that the physical CPU three. And like this, you can, you can see that. So now let's run that in a cyclic test. You can see that the latency is down to that 150 that milliseconds. It's reduced about that 30 milliseconds. Oh. So, uh, okay, let's go to our last part, roadmap. So, this brand, official branch just be created the last two weeks ago, so we have more work to do. We need to test that more platform, and uh, we have to run more tests here as need to run some sort of a sanity test, LPTV, LM bench, and Podix to make sure that our IT branch is stable. And again, we need to that support the IQ affinity. So, so far that Raspberry Lynx doesn't support that uh, IQ affinity, but this is a good feature to that if you have, want to get that good uh, IO performance in terms of the primary Lynx. Another thing about virtualization, you know, Raspberry Pi 3 is based on, is based on v, uh, ARM v8. It has that virtualization extension. So you can that deploy the hypervisor. You can run that multiple guest OS. Uh, so this is really another my interest, that's real-time virtualization. I think this is a good case to that IoT because virtualization can help us address some challenges in the case of IoT, like isolation and that security issue and that consolidation. Uh, and that's the I trying to do, I'm trying to do in the future is at Unix. Now this is another exploration about Unikernel. Um, I'm not sure I've got to have heard of the Unikernel. So Unikernel uh, is that a specialized single address kernel image, machine image constructed by the using label, or, uh, label OS, single address page label OS. So most of the time it just can run one process. Um, but uh, we have a lot of existing uh, Unikernel, but uh, that doesn't uh, succeed. So why these existing Unikernel have yet to get a uh, larger popularity? I think they have some challenges. So in my unikernel exposure, I try to convert links to that uh, unikernel, like uh, unikernel links to address this problem. Um, I have that uh, simple POC, but it's over the x86. I want to bring this to that arm. Oh. Um, this is my presentation. This is just a small story. So if you have any question.
Oh, sorry, I cannot hear you. For a lot of your test results, you were, sh you were showing the maximum latency that you were getting, and it was quite a dramatic drop, but um, did you also characterize the, the latency jitter or you know how, how, how often you were getting that, say 114? Yeah. I didn't have any test results. You didn't? Uh, you mean that's jitter, right? Yes. Oh, I didn't have any test results. Okay. Oh, okay, so I'm, I'm in, me, I'm not to de test that. I'm not test that. But I guess uh, you can find some test results before that. So my work is trying to integrate the, that primary links to that official branch. But before that, I think a lot of guys already did some evaluation test based on the Raspberry Pi and with that primary links. Um, you can find some results. So far, I, I think that should be good. I guess. Uh, there needs to be some uh, 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 some stability problems introduced by the RP patches uh, previously uh, uh, for the for the stability protection system, and uh, uh, it actually became preemptible. Are there any known issues uh, with? Uh, this kernel version? Uh, you mean that uh, Raspberry Pi or that just uh, uh, in general talk about it? With this platform that you, you were testing with the Raspberry Pi. Oh, is that um, why we cannot get a critical session preemptive? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, did, you, uh, did, did you encounter any stability issues introduced by the patches? So you mean uh, what's the special problem specific to Raspberry Pi? <coughs> With it. So what's your question? Sorry. Yeah. I guess uh, your question is um, what's that specific fetch a specific issue to that uh, primary Raspberry Pi links? Uh, uh, there, was a, uh, there was a concern that uh, uh, those uh, uh, critical sections which uh, are now preemptible Mm -hmm. uh, can potentially hide some race conditions. Uh, and uh, di did you notice any stability issues uh, during your uh, uh, work with, uh, with the current kernel version? Uh, current uh, RT version? Oh, sorry, maybe we'll talk about it. You isolated CPU three, yeah, and your um, what is the word uh, latency went down, yeah, but went down on what only on CPU three or, or uh, I could not understand. Oh, exactly. The mm. uh, scenario that you were describing. So, so what I did in my evaluation test, I just isolated CPU three and then dedicated that uh, USB that interrupted to physical yeah. CPU three. Oh, so oh, oh. Uh, so what I did in my evaluation test, uh, I isolated physical CPU three, then I dedicated that uh, interrupt uh, USB interrupt to that physical CPU uh, three. This can make sure that um, your interrupt can be handled in the physical CPU immediately without any infection. I mean, so but uh, your arch task. Uh, it's based on a stack like test uh, that policy. They're still trying to assign that architecture across the four CPU from CPU zero to CPU three. So it's average that. Um, that should. Go back, yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that the physical CPU three has that minimal that uh, latency. Any question? So, so if there are no further questions, uh, thank you, guys. All right.